70. Using the disassociation constant, which is KD, and in this case it equals 2.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the cobalt ion CO3 plus and ammonia, which is NH3, in a 0 0.500 molarity solution of CO NH363 plus. Okay, so a couple of things here, right? We're dealing with KD values, disassociation. Whenever we're given KD values, we're dealing with the complex ion. Now, a complex ion is a combination of a metal and a ligand, they classify it as. It's just kind of like a non-metal complex. And together, they form one whole charge. And the complex ion is here. I'm combining a cobalt metal with a non-metal component, a ligand, and overall, they share a charge, which is an ion. So in this case, the complex ion is the CO NH363+. Now, when we're dealing with disassociation constants, what's going to happen to that complex ion? Well, it's going to dissociate. It's going to break down. And that's the equation that we have to write. We have to show that this complex ion is breaking down into its two components. So let's start from there. So we have CO, NH3, 6, and overall that's a 3 plus. It's a charge, which means that that's aqueous. We're dealing with equilibrium because we're dealing with K values, and it's going to break down into its two parts. So cobalt, that was a, that was a cute little O that I just drew, but then I erased it. Okay, anyway, <laughs> CO3 plus plus NH3. Now, this is a charge, so that's aqueous. And just know that the ammonia in this case is also aqueous when you're dealing with complex ions. Just make sure that you have your equation balanced. There's six ammonias, so I do have to put a six in front of here, and we are good to go. Now, where do we go next? Well, we want to find out those equilibrium concentrations of the two products. And they started us off with a point five molarity solution of the complex ion. This is before we reach equilibrium. So this has to be a initial concentration. And whenever they gave you initial concentrations, you know what we're doing. We're doing an ice table. <laughs> so ice it out, ICE. Draw that line and let's just gather our thoughts. So let's see here. Beautiful. Okay. So I stands for initial. 0.5 goes with the complex ion. So 0 0.500. They didn't state that we started off with any of these. So I'm going to say 0 and 0. C stands for change, the increase or decrease in the concentration. If you started off with nothing, you can only go up from there. So the product side has to be plus and the reactant side has to be minus but we don't know by how much. So that's where the X value comes in and you just match it with the coefficient. Since there was only one complex ion, this would be minus one X, but that's the same as just saying minus X. Same thing goes for the cobalt three plus. There was only one, so one X, but we could just say plus X. But now there's six ammonias, so I have to say plus six X. Equilibrium, we just combine what's going on with the initial and the change. So the equilibrium for the complex ion would be 0 0.500 minus x. 0 plus x is just x. And this would be just 6x. These are the values that go into our disassociation formula. So I'm just going to bring this to the side now, just so that I have more room to work with. Okay. And now KD equals, just like any K value, it's the concentration of the products over the reactants. There's two products divided by the one complex ion. So we have two brackets on the top, one bracket on the bottom. Okay, so we have CO3 plus times the NH3. Now, you always have to raise them to their coefficients. The NH3 was raised to the sixth, so this has to be raised to the sixth. And then the complex ion, CONH3, 
six, three plus. Okay, the KD value is what they gave us, 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 34th. Cobalt is just X. The ammonia is 6X. And this is 0 0.500 minus X. Now hold the phone, because whenever we have a number minus X in our equilibrium equation, chances are that means that we're going to have to do the quadratic equation. We like to assume without doing the quadratic equation. So what we say to ourselves is, since this KD value is so small, it's times 10 to the negative 34th, that means at equilibrium, you should have mostly reactants. And if you started with all reactants and you're ending with mostly reactants, this drop is probably not great at all. It's probably something along the lines of so small that you barely can see it. So we're going to just assume that this minus X is so negligible that it doesn't even matter. Then we do the 5% rule at the end, just to see if we assumed correctly, and then we go on our merry way. So let's go for it. 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 34th equals, we have two on the top, one on the bottom. We have X times 6X to the sixth, oh boy and then times by 0 0.500. Let's work with the 6x to the 6. 6x to the 6 just means that you have 6 6x's six all times together. So it would basically be 6x times 6x times 6x, that's three of them, times 6x times 6x times 6x. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. So. Multiply all the sixes together, which is the same thing as basically six to the sixth. So six times six times six times six times six times six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my goodness. 40, 46,656. And then you collected six X's. So that's the same thing as X to the sixth. So I can basically get rid of this. It's gonna get a little crazy over here. And this is the same as saying 46,656 X to the sixth. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cross multiply. So I'm gonna bring these two values together. I'm just gonna add another, another X value. And then I'm gonna multiply these with this. Okay. So what do we get? 2.2 times 10 to the negative 34th times 0.5, 1.1, times 10 to the negative 34th. I plug it into the calculator and then I'm like, oh, I should know this. <laughs> I don't know why I just plugged it in, but it's good to just have it in the calculator. So 1.1 times 10 to the negative 34th is equal to 46,656 X to the seventh. You pulled together one more X value. So now, just solve for X, so divide by that 46,656, 46,656, this gets crossed off, and now we have this number divided by 46,656. I get a long decimal, so I'll try to give some numbers, 2.357,68, that's good enough, times 10 to the negative 39, and this equals X to the seventh. Okay, so if it's raised to the seventh power, that basically means that we have to do the seventh root. But in the calculator, I have no idea how to use do that, so I just like to raise it to the inverse value. But if you know how to do the seventh root, go, go for it. What I like to do is I just like to raise these values to the inverse number. So seven would be seven over one, so I just raise it to the one over seven, and that cancels this out. But whatever I do on that side, I have to do to this side, so I just raise it to the one seventh. And now I have X equals. So 2.35768 times 10 to the negative 39th, raise that to the one seventh, I get 3.03. 3.03. Three .03 times 10 
to the negative sixth, and that's a molarity. Now, before we actually say it's a molarity, let's just check for that 5% rule. Now, what the 5% rule is, is you're just gonna take the number that you have, 3.3 times 10 to the negative sixth, and you're gonna divide it by your initial concentration, 0 0.500, times up by 100, if this number is five or less, that means we assumed correctly and we can keep our X value. So this divided by 0.5 times 100, I mean, yeah, we're not even at 1%. So we, we well surpassed the 5% rule with flying colors. And we could say that this is our answer in molarity. But is this the answer to the question? They wanted us to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the CO3 plus and the NH3. That goes back to what we stated them as. So the CO3 plus was just X at equilibrium, so it would be the same number, 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative six molarity. But for the ammonia, the NH3, we labeled that as a 6X. So I have to go in there and just times that by 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then we get our answer. So 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative six times six is one point, if we round to three sig figs, 1.82 times 10 to the negative fifth. Molarity, and that's it. Here are your two answers Woo-woo. There we go. Okay, what'd you think? So we're basically going back to equilibrium. We're going back to ice tables, you know. So nothing really new here. It's just more crazy math because now we're seeing like X to the seventh, X to the eighth, X to the fifth. But other than that, I mean, it's basically the same as like chapter 13, just the equilibrium chapter. Okay. Hopefully that's helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.